Thank you for tuning in. So this is the showcase event for the second Legacy Jam. This came to two place between July the 24th and July the 31st ish. We did uh, uh, we were a bit more uh, agile for this game jam. A few teams needed some uh, some extra time just to make sure that everything works uh, correctly technically. Um, yes, we are recording. So let's go. Welcome, welcome, the second Legacy Jam showcase event, official showcase event. We're doing this game jam um, as a monthly event now. Uh, so this is the second time we're doing this. It's a game jam uh, that's dedicated to July 2022. And uh, first, before we talk about the game jam and the results, uh, let's talk a little bit about what is Totem. So very briefly, we're an indie game development collective that unites creators and players around a universe of interconnected game experiences. We build a platform that encourages collaboration between different indie creators around the world. Our aim is to allow indie game developers to earn money through selling in-game assets that players can buy and own and use in the different games on the platform to get different types of experiences. The idea is that games uh, in this game gym that we just had are using the platform that Totem provides and that we're building here. Um, and the games are connected through what we call legacy events. And those events allow players to carry uh, the consequences of their actions between the different games. So we, we say you can think about it as sort of achievements, like Steam achievements, for example, that any developer can publish for their own game, their own related big asset that player owns. And any other developer can read those legacy events from any game. This is a very uh, zoomed in view on one particular aspect of the platform we're building that aims to serve indie game developers around the world, help them to thrive, earn money through this new economic model that we're building, and that we're involving uh, our community in the, the decision-making uh, around this uh, this whole project. So if you want to be part, stay tuned, stick in with us, stay in our Discord. And for now, let's talk about uh, what we have uh, for the jam. So six teams participated in this game jam to create six different game experiences. And the theme for the jam was new mythology. So the idea was uh, the teams can choose any kind of uh, of world mythology from any culture um, and basically create a game around maybe a specific legend, a specific myth, or the, just the, the whole mythology uh, in general as a concept or really whatever they want. And the idea is that the players who are playing those games by logging into them uh, with their Google accounts, they're able to experience the impact of their actions as they play those different games. Um, so we can go into one game, do something, uh, get some sort of an experience, some sort of an achievement or a legacy event rather, then go to a different game and see that something's changed there um, because of the actions that they took. So these are the mythologies that the team chose for this legacy event. Uh, those are in alphabetical order. So we have the team, the ASIC team. So uh, make some noise. Asic team. Arimus, Roy. What's up? What's up? Hey, Perfect. What's up we, have the, we have the Brazilian myth with Eduardo. Eduardo, say hi. Hello, Eduardo. Hi. We have the Canaanite team. Uh, you are quite a few people generally, but here I see Ofek and I pick up Yacht. Yeah, Yacht is here. Yeah, dude. Hey. 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 Welcome. Uh, we have uh, from Greek, from the Greek myth, we have a lot. And I see we have some people from the Romanian team as well. See here, Saf and Galit. Say hi. Can't hear you. All right, let's continue with that. So, uh, I'm Without any further ado, I'm now going to uh, basically, well, we're, we're going to do something like this. We're going to go over the different games. I'm going to play them. And the team uh, that uh, created the game that I'm playing um, can say a few words about the process, like uh, how you chose this mythology, uh, why you chose this particular story, what was the intention of you uh, creating this game in this, in this game jam, and also how you approach the legacy events. So uh, just again to mention very briefly, 
the idea was to create games that uh, that are all interconnected. So the, the team is creating a game, but they also have to keep in mind what are the other games that are being developed to sort of give some, uh, some space for them inside their own game and interpret the legacy events that are broadcasted by the other teams inside their game and also think about what legacy events they want to publish. So we're going to start off with, oh, <laughs> before that, we have mentioned some uh, special thanks. So I just put a flash here right before, you know, as a cliffhanger kind of situation. Special thanks for our builders, Snare and Phaeton, for creating the Unity plugin about, uh, for creating the the, uh, the, the Unity plugin and uh, providing with some technical support. Uh, you guys probably uh, approach Phaeton quite a bit during the game jam. So special thanks uh, uh, to them uh, and to Akova for the AWS deployment of the server server that we're currently using. Uh, for Michal, who created the gem branding and the art that you saw leading into the game gem and in the, the presentation themselves, and some uh, supporters. So we have Banana Day, we have Phaeton and Judge uh, for being available for uh, people's questions during, uh, throughout the game gem. Thank you all so very much. Uh, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'm now going to continue uh, straight into the first game. You still so, have us, uh, uh, which game yeah, you didn't finish? Which game I didn't finish? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think you're going to to discover this uh, through this stream because I may not be able to finish uh, to complete the games even right now. And I tried quite a few times, to say the least. Uh, and just uh, something very small here. We have a vast community of people. We're um, around 250 people now on Discord here on the server. And, uh, you know, quite a few of them are being involved in all of this operation, you know, different things are going on. And if you want to be involved, um, take, take part in building the tools, for example. So I heard quite a few comments on uh, the tools can be a, a little bit more uh, easy to use uh, throughout the game jam. So if you have any any ideas, you can use the different uh, the different appropriate channels to, to post your ideas, to post your feedback and comments. Uh, we're very, you know, transparent and open about everything we're doing, and we welcome uh, any sort of feedback, comment, and also if anyone wants to participate, you know, push, uh, push some, uh, do a comment into our Git, you know, try, try it out. And your code will end up being a part of this, uh, this, this platform uh, or a specific plugin that that that's uses it. Um, so uh, yeah, feel free to to approach us in all of those regards. But let's go for what we're here for. Let's start with Achilles <laughs> again. Uh, no, I'm actually not going to tell you the order. I'm, I'm just going to keep it uh, keep it a secret. So we'll start with a game that's called Achilles. Uh, you can probably imagine what myth or legend this game is based on. Uh, so I'm going to run it. May have to lower the uh, sound of it a little bit. Music's quite cool. Let me share the screen on the correct, correct game now. So, change windows into this. Let me know if you can see my screen. Hopefully, I won't crash. Let me see the game. Are we laughing? You see little Achilles, little topless Achilles walking around with his sword and shield? Perfect. I'm going to do a totem look game really quick. You probably won't see this part. But, uh, I'm logging in and I just got a login successful. So now I'm locked as my own uh, user. I'm to the total system and it me to start. So I'm going to hit this box and right off the bat, Alon, tell us a little bit about the game. What I'm doing here, why did you choose a hero for your game? And uh, how did you approach the guitar and legacy class? Okay, uh, the way I got to Achilles is very convoluted actually. My original plan was to cure um, the archer trying to kill Achilles. And you have like an army, a distraction, and you're just trying to get his heal. And realize that like, you don't have enough agency. Like, I'd rather be the one killing everyone. Uh, so the idea of uh, uh, being in seeming danger but not being in danger because you can run one this mile of like, being mostly invincible. Uh, so that's how I came with the game. Uh, there are three legacy events. Uh, one is called uh, Deceiver. That's if you get a lot of false hits. Like if you get hit anywhere that is not your heal, uh, you don't take damage. So if you have more than 10 hits like that, that's one event. Another one is finishing the game. And the last one is like a skill-based achievement, 
which is very difficult, uh, untouchable. If you finish the game without uh, losing any health. Oh, I'm already not going to get that. Yeah. You see, I lost two two HP, but you can see that basically, I'm I'm invincible, right? So anywhere like any soldier is trying to hit me, we have the ranked soldiers here, here as well. Um, okay, but as you see, the the ranged enemies are actually having like they have some sort of a piercing damage attack, so they're very oh, yeah, that, So actually, I thought about adding another legacy event that I didn't get to, which was supposed to be uh, so goes the tale. Uh, so Achilles eventually dies from an archer. So the the archers, I didn't looking uh, like bow and arrow is a bit too convoluted for me in the time frame, especially being a solo developer. Um, but they gave them, they aim for your heal. Like the archers aim, aim for your heal, yeah, your heal. That's why it's like they're more dangerous. That's pretty cool. And I, I feel like for a solo dev, this is pretty impressive. So you did it on your free time during the seven, uh, seven day long game and I'm, I'm, I'm having a blast with this game. I actually managed to beat Hector quite a few times, but I never actually got to uh, to not losing any hope. So I didn't yes, get that. very hard. I didn't get that much hope. Specifically, I find this. What yeah. is it? It's something to aspire to. Yeah, and I think actually Hector is not, was never my main concern. It's towards those ranged, uh, ranged attacks, which is just like the myth. You know? So uh, yeah, yeah. I think it's a, it's a very good interpretation of the myth. And can you tell us a little bit, did you actually manage to incorporate any other players' legacy events? Yeah, uh, only, only Eduardo. Uh, that can make, uh, if you're finding the game too hard, if you finish Eduardo's game, uh, on the second wave you have the Guara force that will make you strong. Oh, so you can actually uh, get the Guara now with if you beat uh, the Brazilian yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk about this one uh, later, but uh, this is probably already a spoiler. As you can see, I don't have any more roots in this game. This may be um, a slight hint to which game I've never managed to beat. Nothing. <laughs> uh, all right. So um, here, uh, so you can see, I, I actually managed to beat the game this time, and I'm going to go just to show you how it looks. I'm actually going to go into the uh, dashboard that we have. So we have this sort of, um, I'm back. So we have this sort of uh, dashboard that shows, uh, you can log in actually with your uh, Google account to see the different legacy events that were recorded in, in the different games that you were playing. So you can see here, I already have a, a new, just from now, just from this very minute, the new uh, legacy channel. Uh, one minute ago for the Legacy Jam 2 Greek with a data of two. So basically along the side that if you manage to beat this game, he's publishing uh, this integer, this two integer, so that other players, uh, other developers rather, uh, can use it to interpret the fact that you managed to beat Hector. Um, so this is just an uh, example. We have this, this dashboard available to everyone. It's very much work in progress, but I just wanted to show you exactly um, how it looks like, from the other side. Uh, so we're uh, along. Uh, yeah, more today, and sorry, I'm going to mute Ben. Sorry, Ben, and welcome. Uh, we'll be moving into the next game. So uh, let's get back to my slideshow. No spoilers. There you go. So the next game is. If you look at that. Say hello to the Canaanite uh, team. Who do we have hello. here? So we have Moffat and Avia. Welcome. Hello, Moffat. So uh, I'm going to run your game now. If you want to share anything, you know, if you want to open your camera or anything like this, uh, feel free. But I'm, I'm going to run your game. Very unique one, I think, uh, at least regarding the, the general approach we saw in this, in this game, Jim. It's a pretty cool. Uh, kind of a sandboxy toy-ish experience that you've created. Uh, you were quite a large team, right? So I think you were like uh, five people, maybe six in it. Is that true? Yes, it was me, Abiyad, Yuba, Itamal, Tal, and uh, I think also oh yes, always it was. That, that's pretty amazing. Seriously, so I think uh, yeah, like easily the biggest team 
on this game jam and you created something very unique you can see the name is called Canaanite Idol which is a play I think on American Idol uh, so I'm to be oh Ofek I see you're also streaming your game are you are you competing with me what's going on here no no I what? tried to open my camera but I don't have a camera so this is what I so just the next slide interpretation yeah, of not you. hoping so uh, I'm close pretty cool yeah. pretty good <laughs> So uh, anyway, let's go. So I'm going to log into my user, and you'll see this may be the biggest spoiler of them all about which game he got didn't manage to finish, um, because you'll see here that at least one of the available unlocks in Canaanite Idol is not available for me. Um, so Ofek, uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about Canaanite Idol? I really love the music for this one, sort of the and uh, like old take on a kind of a LucasArts the type of uh, in music. It's really the music is really great, but you have to lower it, otherwise we can't hear it often. No, oh, I'm sorry. You can start the lower it a bit if it's possible. Let me know if it helps somehow. Is it better? Oh, yeah, yeah, true, yes. Perfect. Um, so uh, I'm really about about it. It's really amazing uh, what he uh, did with all the skittles. And uh, it was a lovely walk of six artists. We didn't have any programmers, uh, but we did uh, use your guy, you guys' help. And it was a very challenging but very rewarding experience, I must say. Uh, we decided to go for Knanite because uh, we're like, we're from Israel, so we're connected to the Knanite myth in uh, one way or another. So, uh, hey. yeah, enjoy. So let's see, so here, um, the, like this character comes, who I assume is an, an old kind of prophet guy. And we're in artists, I see, so he needs our help. They need to build out a god sculpture ASAP. God is a mysterious force or concept that is beyond our understanding. It is a something that is unknowable and undescribable. So I'll describe him to you. We have about a minute to present the sculpture to the angry village mob. If they won't like him, they will most likely kill us. But it's okay, because God is just a figment of our imagination. <laughs> uh, if the village will like our god sculpture, they will give us a lot of money. And if they don't, we can always make another one. Or we die, who knows? So, uh, we have 60 seconds to build a god for the village. And uh, right now, the prophet only cares about the, the, the head part. So you'll see this, this god, god idol, and uh, canonic idol, is built out of three different parts. And you can build different types of idols <laughs> with the system that you built here. But now we only mm -hmm. care about the head. So let's, let's see the problem. The god is easily scared and came from the ocean. They may not be the smartest god around, but they are definitely lovable. So uh, if I... Remember correctly, and this is probably a hint I gave you. You used playground like Dali's um, AI uh, technology to come up with those prompts, right? So those are all AI generated, right? Well, indeed, we use them to get inspiration. But then uh, Tal, our amazing uh, content writer, came up with like a way that it will be more readable to the player. Perfect. So now, as you see, we have 60 seconds to create this uh, this god character. We had we have a bunch of different pieces, and for this prompt, as you can see, the guy is easily scared and comes from the ocean. We only care about the head part, and uh, I'll just move around to show you a bunch of different options. But this one is quite easy. I, I got this one. We have this Patrick kind of character. So this is this is the right one. Uh, hopefully you guys will be able to help me, because uh, I just realized there are actually three games I never managed to finish, and this is one of them. So uh, maybe you can help me with the prompts to get a better a better result this time. <laughs> hey man, I think you should start a line of sculptures like these. You can sell them, call it an NFT. It's the future of art and you can be a pioneer in the space. I don't know man, sometimes I get these visions, says the prophet. It's a very interesting take on... Uh, Many things actually. So, who does that? Okay, enough with that. So, the talk of the god is the most important part of the statue because it is uh, part of the statue that is the most visible. So now this is the most important part. We have two different pieces we need to uh, we need to uh, we need to pick. So she's a lot. 
the head of a dragon. She has large, sagging breasts and a huge belly. Her skin is red and scaly, and she has a large, sharp claws. She's a powerful goddess who is often associated with fertility. So if you can help me with that, I think this is actually the correct one, at least for the torso part. But I never managed it. Look, we have a little frog from the story tops. From Totem, it's a little Easter egg. I never managed to find the correct head for this. So do you need to come up with that topic? Yes, it uh, was the last one, the dragon. Um, this? No, another one back. Another one. Okay. Oh, wow. Yes, this one. This is this the dragon's head. Body. And the body is the... Yes, this one. This one? And no, no. if you want the legs, you will find them, I believe. So now what I want to show you, when a bunch of those, I'm not even going to go through all of them. So I'm not going to get like a, such a great uh, result in terms of legacy events, but I do want to show you that this game actually managed to implement all of the different games inside it through a very simple, uh, very, very simple way. So now we have uh, human legs and the god of tools and fire. He's worshipped by trolls and he's known for his strength and power. I just want to show you a bunch of stuff that I unlocked by playing all of the other games that you play. So you can see here, this golden head of an Aztec warrior that I got by playing the Aztec game. And you can see here, those eyes uh, uh, kind of head that kind of look like the Guaraná fruit from the Brazilian, because I played this one quite a bit. And we <laughs> only have this one, this which is unlocked for uh, the Celtic game. I don't wonder what that means. Um, and then we have... Uh, this little Greek warrior here for playing the Greek game, and this lady from playing the Romanian game, actually. So I don't have much time for this one, so let's see if we can do it in like 10 seconds. I'll think which ones are the correct ones. I think okay, this one... Okay, you the troll head, the fire torso, and the legs are cake. Okay, troll head, now fire torso, and you win the game. I do. I actually so did. Some, uh, some legacy events will be unlocked for you, okay. So now I guess I'm going to get the God of Arts uh, uh, legacy event, right? As opposed to the uh, other one that I only had, which is God of Farts. Uh, nice job there. So uh, anyway, Ofek uh, and all of the team of Yannis here with us as well uh, from uh, the Knight Myth team. Thank you so much. This is a lovely game, very cool experience. And uh, it does look like you're all uh, studying visual communication somewhere. Uh, so, good job in that regard. Pretty cool pixel art. I love the, really love the art, the different like, uh, content that you, you managed to come up with. Uh, very, very cool. So, congratulations on that. Uh, on, and also, congratulations on the second Legacy Jam being the first real world gym uh, you participating in. Is that true? Yes, that's cool. Actually, each one of us, it's like a first uh, game in our gym. That's pretty amazing. Uh, we're very happy to be part of your legacy. Yeah, yeah. I just thought it was a very interesting and charming experience. It was also very fun. Very, very happy to hear that. So uh, you can tap yourself on uh, on your back, because this is a pretty good result, I think, for a first game gym. All right, so we're back. With our second game, this one is the Guarana Mint, uh, the game that's based on a local Brazilian myth created by Eduardo A. Santos. So, Eduardo, I'm going to show you a game, and I'm sure you have quite a lot to tell us about it. So, uh, I'm going to share my screen, and you can you can go ahead and talk right now. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, what are the idea of this game was like, I, I'm quite fond of making games related to the Brazilian culture. I mean, the last game we developed at Taverteo is a game that brings something from Brazilian culture. So, even though I'm going solo on this uh, game jam, I thought about bringing some Brazilian culture as well. So, I picked this legend from the Guarana. The legend, it's very simple, it's about... Uh, about a kid who died and very simple about a kid who died and like a god from the natives said for, for the parents to burn the kid's eyes and when those in a few times those eyes like sprouted into fruits that could give the warriors of any tribe a lot of strength so 
very simply put, that's the legend yeah. of the Guarana. Uh, and I was like thinking, I must make a game that has a relatively small scope, since I'm thinking about doing it only, uh, doing it alone, solo, and also that I wasn't going to use the whole time for the game gen. I was going to use like, maybe, I, I used only like full two days. The other times I was like using a bit of the free time to make the game. But well, uh, the game is sort of a choose your own adventure style. You can, you can see it's more like you can watch the player walking and from time to time you find encounters and you must, uh, you must play with those encounters in a way that you don't lose all your life. For example, if you lose all your life, it's the only way you lose. If you lose all your food, you start to lose life. And if you lose all your sanity, your morale, then you start to be unable to do decisions. And that will happen until you have more sanity. For example, <laughs> right now. <laughs> this is a hard one, by the way. Um, I'm, 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 by the way, I'm not sure, do I need to do the login again after I lose? Because it doesn't show my email just after that. So maybe... I'm not sure, actually. Maybe it's needed. <laughs> That's something I didn't test, to be honest. So, yeah, go ahead. So, uh, oh, I can see the that if you counters, you know, the, I assume you're from the myth, or you came up with them yourself. Where, where did those come from? For example, the story about the red flowers. Okay, so, I picked, like, I think only two Brazilian myths as extras to place as encounters. One of them is from the alligator-headed witch, and the other is from the headless mule. There's like there are like two very famous uh, inside Brazil, of course, uh, myths from the Brazilian folklore. The headless mule with uh, a fire in the place of its head, and the witch with the alligator head that we call her Cuca. And it's like. Two very, there are, these two myths are like very famous due to kids shows and other stuff here in Brazil. So I think like, I'm going to play them inside the game. And well, this, those are like the only two myths that are implemented, but there are other encounters as well that are like non-related to myths exactly. Cool. And uh, what about the music? The music. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. The music. It's, I picked an old public domain opera from Brazil that is called, that's called the Guarani. It's very, it's a opera from the time, opera from the time of the Brazilian empire. It's, it's very old. So this, it's a opera that tells the story about a sort of a native a Brazilian hero. There's, I don't know the whole story for the opera, but some sort of this way. So I think it was fitting for a game that would tell the story of a hero who would like go to find a, a way to be stronger for his tribe. So I played the music, I got a MIDI version of it, and I just altered it some in some ways to be more 8-bit, more ship to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that, that's pretty cool. It gives a, a real character, I think, to the game, which is Otherwise, uh, soundless. I think it, it's a really efficient way, you know, to use some really big assets like that, for example, music. And I think it, it really fits, really does fit the game. I want to ask you about a specific event that I, I keep encountering, and I feel like sometimes it gives me uh, some pluses on food and sanity, and sometimes I, I lose uh, my sanity and my hearts. Um, and it's the one that's related to the deer. I think is this one of the stories you mentioned? Because it's the most unique. Uh, in terms of, you know, the impact of the events themselves. I think, it, I feel like it's quite random. Well, there is the one that's quite random. It's the one from the mule, that one of the options, you don't know what will happen, and there's like two options to happen. And there is the second option that it's quite bad. So when the mule event happens, you have to like, okay, I probably have to gamble here, unless you are in a situation that you must it's quite of a management game, resource management game in many ways. So, just for note, uh, I managed to finish the game. <laughs> so, Congratulations. Never managed to finish the game. I actually uh, watched a video of me reaching the final stage of the game. I actually already saw my character, uh, like, beneath the Guaraná fruit. 
and uh, and then I lost. I think I, I got the the option of the mule, like the mule encounter, and I had to risk it because I only had two two hearts. So I risked it and I lost it. I was very sad about it, um, but that's fine because I feel like it has some legs. You know, with a few more encounters, it's gonna be a, a very cool experience. Maybe some some items. It, it, it's already a very interesting uh, kind of uh, design space to work. In. So congratulations on that. Very expendable, for so to say. Yeah, quite easily. I want to ask you about the legacy events because I actually don't think I've managed to see the legacy events that you have implemented in the game since I never managed to actually. Um, but do you know the uh, the, the relevant um, uh, legacy events from the other games side? If you can share a little bit about this, I'll be, sure. I'll be very happy. Well, the the game broadcasts for now only two legacy events. I plan on doing three, but I only made two: the when you win the game and when you win the game, but you return from insanity two times in in, in this game. So. Uh, about using the other game's legacies, I implemented a few of them, just two, the God of Arts, uh, and I think it was the Aztec, if, yeah, the Aztec one, but you must kill like 500 enemies. I didn't know if that was a good value, but I placed 500 enemies, it appears, there's like two encounters. Unfortunately, I couldn't test very truthfully this legacy implementation of the other games, but I don't, so I don't know if they are fully functional, but they're probably somewhat functional. All right, cool. So by the way, after the game jam, and there I got this uh, about the game. After the game jam, if you want uh, to update your games, you know, maybe add some more legacy events just to uh, tie this entire experience together a little bit better, you, you can go ahead uh, and do it. This is this is totally fine. Uh, I think it, it's even encouraged. Because uh, this is kind of what, what we're trying to do here. I I didn't manage to see any of the uh, God of Arts um, encounters, and I do know that I've actually managed to do it because I just achieved it, and I don't think we saw anything new here in this run. So it's maybe a good uh, a good opportunity to tell you all guys, um, you know, after this event, test your game, see if you want to add something, see if you want to fix something, if you manage to actually experience the different things that you put into the games, um, and uh, and yeah, then we can continue. Uh, Maybe to the to the next uh, to the next game jam with some new, new cool interesting ideas uh, for how to connect the different experiences. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to keep trying to beat this one because it's it's easily one of the hardest ones. Uh, and now I only have two games that need to be finished left. So uh, thank you so much, Eduardo. This has been super insightful. Um, I'm I'm very happy. You know, we already saw the Knight game that's uh, based uh, around you know the. Uh, the, the team being uh, from Israel and having some sort of relationship with this uh, myth. Eduardo, who's coming from Brazil, bringing forth um, his own culture into his game. This is very inspiring um, to see. So, uh, so congrats to all of you, and hopefully uh, you feel very proud uh, for being involved in this, uh, in this game gen. And I'm back. Yeah, Discord did crash eventually. We're back in business. All right, so uh, hopefully you heard the, the most important parts of what I wanted to say. And now we are in Mixtech. Say, say hello, Mixtech team. Roy. Hello, Roy. hello. 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 Oh, hey, what's up, guys? to run your game then. Uh, and maybe you can uh, tell us a little bit about it. It's a pretty cool one, inspired by real-world artifacts. I think now your computer will crash. <laughs> yeah. So, uh... Oh, it was fun having that. Told you. <laughs> you will resurrect. <laughs> you were right. You were indeed correct. It's a feature. Thank you. The raw force of the Aztec gods speaks through Discord. I'm gonna open my turn on my camera once more, and hopefully now you're all able to see me logging into my Google accounts in Mexico. Yeah. And... Well, there is a good event. The good we saw the game uh, not working. I'm gonna keep my uh, my camera closed for this one, guys. Yeah, I'm gonna the camera. 
So uh, I, I will keep uh, my camera closed. I'll, I'll run the game again so that you can see from the beginning Sorry about the technical issues. Uh, doing the login again. By the way, Dan, well, uh, it looks like maybe our server is limited to 25 participants. Uh, we'll have to check it and maybe upgrade the server or switch to Zoom or do something like that. Interesting. All right. Well, we'll check it for, uh, for the next time. Yep. Right. Tell us a bit about Nixtec. Yeah, so we chose the Aztec uh, mythology because uh, I didn't know anything about it basically, so it was interesting for me. And uh, Plumman uh, sent a uh, few links. We saw, read some interesting stories, and then we started to design basically the the basics. And uh, Uri Mas did an amazing job. He wanted to do a tower defense game. And uh, yeah, we had a little bit of pressure at the end just to, to make everything uh, perfect and working. Uh, I, I'm sure we will continue working on it because it was extremely fun, like working uh, with two amazing uh, guys that uh, one of them I didn't even know before. So that was a cool experience. Uh, yeah, so I'm happy we just have the, the game working actually. And uh, I think we will keep working on it. That's pretty cool. That's pretty, pretty exciting. It was your first game jam as well. Yeah, first game jam. I learned some new softwares, Blender. I did my first models of this, uh, yeah, yeah this cool. god. I actually turned around the camera to show in this model. Yeah, I wish the camera was uh, rotating like in Blender. But, uh, yeah, I, I feel like this game has some legs. It definitely looks beautiful. I really love the assets. And can you tell us a little bit about the inspiration? Because this game has a, a very interesting story, which is related to the fact that all of it is taking place on this, uh, this yeah, sheet. Yeah, on this book, on this book actually, I uh, forgot his name, but uh, it has this amazing designs of uh, all the, the, the Mexican. Oh, and, yeah, and uh, it's just beautiful. The, the moment we saw it, we just said, this has to be the style uh, that we're gonna do it. We're just gonna make it on the book itself and keep the same uh, elements and yeah that's it that's pretty cool very good job guys uh, can you share a little bit about the the legacy events and how you decided to approach those yeah uh, basically with legacy events we had uh, uh, basically for logging what we are logging is we are logging how many people uh you how many aspects you kill uh, how many uh, managed to pass and then the god anger level and we took uh, the legacy events from Romanian uh, game and added the bonus of uh, 42 uh, gold pieces because obviously that's the answer to everything just because of the time limitations we wanted to do that it, uh, if you play the game it adjusts the level the, the speed of the turret uh, that is firing so basically you get less money but the, the turrets are updated that way when you play different games the game evolves and balance shifts so you need to not only play this game well but also play other games uh to to, to feel the game from the different side that's cool so you, you choose an approach of basically altering gameplay so the players find the game playable again and having like a sort of a different challenge uh, at least in the approach i mean this is definitely uh a, looks like it has some some room to to evolve but in terms of uh like humans of a bunch of people one of which uh, just learned to do 3d art to some some great success i think this is very very good job um so uh congratulations i do think the fire sort of totem um doesn't do much damage uh, if you buy it first like you lose the game immediately so i feel like maybe this one uh should be a bit balanced but yeah. but all in all thank you thank you for uh, for uploading uh, this and being involved in the game jam. It's, it's so cool to see people coming together from all over the world like that. Um, so uh, thank you, thank you for the mix that team. Uh, I'm going to try to turn on my, uh, my camera again. Let's see if it works, hello. And I think we are now um, with the last game. No, the second to last game of the game. So on two more, uh, we're going to talk about the next game. I'm not going to show it to you through my presentation, actually. I'm just going to go straight into the splash screen because uh, this one has some music. It's pretty exciting. 
So, uh, and correct me if I'm not pronouncing it right, but Kadu uh, Roy. So uh, we have another team. Uh, we have Sat here. I'll lower the music volume as well, even though this one I know is also custom made for this game. And, uh, it's pretty good as well. So um, we have uh, 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 Sap here, uh, Snapkin, and we have uh, Stealth Dash, Galit. Maybe yeah, not Galit. Also uh, here. Hi. So maybe, uh, I mean, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Great. So, uh, yeah, it, it, can you tell us a little bit about the game? This one is certainly. Uh, it's very beautiful in terms of art. I, I feel like those those assets are so unique. I'm going to, I just love doing so I'm going to start playing the game. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about it? What's going on? Who are we? Okay. What are we doing? Uh, he's coming next to me. I run away from him and then he's coming next to me. Anyway, uh, three disclaimers. First of all, all you guys are really amazing. Well, uh, Congratulations. Second thing, um, English is not my first language, so I hope I'm very clear with what I'm going to explain. And the third thing, I'm not the right person to explain the game because I was mostly the artist. I spent most of the time focusing driving free, so I hope I can explain the whole thing of legacy on the game, okay? Sorry, people. Okay, so basically our game is based on the Romanian mythology of, I don't know how to pronounce that, like I said, it, this is not my language either, Padu Roy. No, nobody, nobody knows how to call it, yeah, something okay. like that, but Padorio. Ofec, Ofec, another uh, member, I mean, not member, uh, he uh, also did a game for the jam and he said that his mother was from Transylvania, so maybe we will we'll have to ask her later. But anyway, the character is based on uh, uh, this mythology and explains that he's basically like a protector of the forest. So we chose him because he used weapons, and mainly the spear and the spear, I mean, and the bow and arrow. And we were like, okay, this may work for the, for the jam. And the goal of the game is basically to stop a lumberjacker. So, wood chopper like trying to cut the trees um, when the player is near the enemies they leave the trees and attack the player and yeah uh, what else can I explain um they... I, I, can, I can just say that like when we have the brainstorming it was a great like theme so we found a lot of ideas and then we looked in uh, google for a uh, spear and mythology and we found this story. We found it just in the in Hebrew in the Wikipedia, and it was like he have like two weapons. He have a spear that like uh, save uh, his life and give him health, and he have like a bow that he can uh, uh, catch people with uh, with plants. And we were like, okay, it's it's a game. It's an already a game. The the story. So let's do it. Uh, and it's Romanian, that it's really cool, and the uh, musician Tamir that worked with us in the team is also Romanian, so the music is like influences from Romanian music, and, and it was really fun like to, to, to found this uh, mythology, this myth. This is very, very cool. Um, yeah, it does sound like this, this story is like a, a, a game design document. That's pretty cool that you found this, this little gem. Um, can you tell us a little bit about, like, the game is amazing. I find it very entertaining, you know, just tying those two different weapons into two different special powers, uh, like the Doom approach of hitting a melee weapon and getting some, some for your life back, and uh, the, the entangling, like, uh, roots that, that sort of capture those uh, those those lumberjacks when, when you, you hit them yeah. with a bow and arrow. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, do you, can you share a little bit about what the approach was in terms of like the legacy events for this game? Um, what I got from the legacy events is like one of the is nothing. Then we have rampager, like win while killing enemies very quickly. The next one is strategies, win while killing enemies very slowly. Martyr, uh, die many times and win anyway, and fight another day, fail to protect the forest. 
That's cool. our basic data and data set already. And uh, nice. did, you, did you find a way to incorporate the other legacy events inside your, your own game, inside this, this remaining net? Um, uh, what do you mean exactly? I'm sorry. The, like, there is two games that we connected ah. with. Ah, okay, 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 sorry. Um, basically, we connected with the game of Alon, Achilles. Uh, what I, what I remember, oh, if you win the game, um, Achilles, then in our game, the enemies will appear with the helmet of, uh, of Achilles. And oh. then... We are, yeah, we are connected also to the, I think the, the, the game of Eduardo, something with the Guarana, right, the plant. Yeah. So if you basically reach the, the fruit of the plant there, then in our game, you will see that fruit, like the eye, you will see it in the trees. Oh, I see. It so that's where to get uh, Eduardo's Eduardo's legacy event for his game because I never managed to beat it. Uh, I don't see the, the helmet from the Greek game. So did you do you, did you remember what event it was exactly? Maybe you had to be Hector with the untouchable uh, requirement because I, I didn't see that they they're changed in any way. Oh okay, sorry, I, I don't know. If somebody's not here, okay, what's yeah, the main program? To... Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Maybe check back okay. at it. And let us know and, and if you'd like change anything just keep us updated so that we can uh, we, we can actually test it but this is this is a pretty cool uh like cosmetic change so you're taking aspects of the different games and tying them into your own game it's a it's a cool a cool win to the to the other creators so uh all right cool very much uh, appreciate yeah, we'll, it we will ask it Amar, how exactly we go though so we will let you know but i i've seen it work so okay, i don't cool. know how do you, you achieve that Sorry. And to beat uh, beat Hector remaining with uh, with full hearts remaining or something, uh, but yeah. for now continue on. Well, and I see that yeah, my screen is not shared, uh, but uh, yeah, I did I did actually play for the past like two minutes or so. So uh, all right, so now with the last uh, game, the game that the sixth in number, uh, six six six. This video. Oh, for this one, we have quite a loud music swarming to slumber in a little bit. It's quite scary in this opening screen. You don't share it. Yeah, I know. I'm just, uh, I don't want to like kill your uh, ears or anything. So, uh, who could spades? Do we have anyone here to uh, to share with us? Uh, Rotten, maybe. Um, maybe Day. I'm here as well. Hello. So, uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about Puka's Maze. Um, um, do you hear me? <laughs> yes, loud and clear. Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, so, what can we say? We came to the jam, uh, actually with an idea, um, to make a game about uh, uh, me and Rotem's uh, cat. Uh, which his name is Puka, and then when you revealed the, the theme uh, of uh, this game jam, uh, I said, perfect, Puka is actually a, a legendary creature from that topic mythology, uh, let's go for it. <laughs> and we wanted to uh, make something unsettling, scary, um, and uh, with a team of the Puka, which is a trickster kind of uh, character, um, they try to um, uh, do tricks on people. Sorry for my English, by the way. Um, and we also wanted to make it a big challenge uh, with time limit. Um, and maybe if Dave here, uh, he could uh, uh, give his notes uh, about uh, the development as well <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah so what we ended up having um is a maze game based really on that uh, mischievous creature called the puka from the celtic religion it's supposed to be um a little bit of a horror game maybe as a kind of unsettling as you all said uh, i do have to give a small disclaimer that uh, i have to take responsibility for the end product because i didn't have a lot of time to work on this oh, um, I'm 
Yeah, I did have a lot of time last week, but however, uh, the art, I tried to implement as much art as we could. The art was really, really nice. This is all drawn by uh, Yuval Rotem and Zylo, who is not here, I think. Can you guys hear me? Yes, isn't here. Yeah, and Shaha, who is uh, Zylo in the Totem Discord. And we have a lot of sound effects and music all made by uh, John, who's also not here, but he was also a team member. So um, all assets were made by us. And yeah, your goal is to interact with three statues. These are statues of the Puka. You're giving uh, basically offerings to the god. And once you interact with all three, he opens up the gate for you and you can leave the maze. Now, I think I, I'm having a, a really hard time here to not actually manage to find any of them. Uh, this is quite a quite a hard one to say the least. So this one and um, the Guaraname are by far I think the hardest games in the entire game. And I managed to actually find the three statues once, but never managed to get back to the gate to escape. So this one's very, very hard. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. It was rough. Yeah, it's, it's, it's challenging. Yeah, it definitely is get those jump scares by the puka and to get those oil flasks to re relight your your torch basically and when the the fire dies completely uh you're basically dead um so uh, this is quite a cool one and i know you had like uh, lots of plans about implementing different traps and stuff um and uh dave hopefully you're, you're feeling better because i know you, you got sick during the game though so you weren't able to actually uh, like use all the time as you planned to, uh, but uh, hopefully you're better better now. Uh, but maybe maybe share with us a little bit about the the idea, the plan for how you how we wanted to implement uh, the different legacy events. I do think I managed to see something that's rather weird, and it only happens sometimes in the game, which involves color. So maybe you can tell tell us a little bit about that. Okay, yeah. So the color. <laughs> so. Um... Didn't have a lot of time for the legacy events. What I ended up going with is taking the God of Farts achievement from the Knaanite game, the one where you uh, build the gods. And if you only got the God of Arts, uh, God of Farts achievement and not the God of Arts, so you only lost the game, never actually beat it, you are supposedly punished by those gods that you couldn't uh, really build up, and you get this kind of funky lighting effect in this game. It's basically just entering a nightmare mode in this game. It makes it even uh, harder to go through. Just well, because seen, the light is kind of messing with you. Yeah, and, and since I just beat the, the Anite Idol game, I don't think I'm ever going to see this one. So uh, this is out the window. This is another like uh, uh, chance to, to, to plug just the concept of having interconnected games. This may be an experience that I'm never going to have again just because something changed with my player app. And now yeah. the experience, I just lost uh, an opportunity to, to see some kind of experience. We're seeing like the idea of this persistency aspect that maybe some players don't, don't really like, but some uh, may find uh, interesting. And you basically get to decide exactly how you want to implement this. So it's up to the developers themselves to decide uh, if things are like uh, gone forever, as we see in this example. So I won't be able to show you all of it, like the trippy kind of experience that I got from the out of farts um, kind of achievement. But, uh, just having you know this persistency effect can, can create some very interesting situations and put the players in a position where anything they're doing can have like sometimes maybe massive consequences or for future experiences that they're going to play maybe even in games that haven't come up yet right because maybe those the games that you created are going to be somehow connected in the past through games maybe in other legacy uh, legacy jams or maybe created by other players uh, other developers in the ecosystem. Um, so it does seem like there is no escape. <laughs> so actually, I did test the game, just like a, a little thing I was reading about mazes when I was making this, and apparently it randomly generated mazes without loops, which is a thing, a loop. Uh, you can beat them with the right hand rule, which means anytime you come up on an intersection, if you turn exactly. right. And just to make it clear, I tried using exactly that method quite a few times to no success. So I'm just sticking to the right, usually, for now, mm -hmm. I, ch I changed it a few times just to to, to try uh, to try something else, to show you a bunch of stuff. But basically, like, it's it's very hard. I feel like it may be tied to the time in which uh, Lamp, it, like, runs out. 
uh, and maybe to the yeah. side. With knobs, you can play around like making the maze a bit smaller or something like this. But it does encourage you to take risks sometimes uh, because with the right hand roll, um, I, I couldn't actually do it. Uh, but I do feel like it's on point for this uh, this trickster gun, Celtic tri trickster gun um, that the, the game is inspired by. So uh, thank you guys so much. So it, it, it turns out like you were actually uh, more people than I thought. So you were five people. So just point me at the at Chapa who joined the game to help me with the art assets, which are beautiful. All of them are handcrafted, uh, hand drawn. So uh, very well done job. Um, I. I didn't get a chance to let you all properly introduce yourselves, so we can just take some time, you know, um, to like uh, chill fully, just share some stuff about the team. So if you guys wanna wanna talk a little bit about yourselves, how you came together, uh, we can start basically from the Aztec team. Just tell us a little bit about who you are, because uh, we do want to get to 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 know everybody and also to connect you to each other, just so you know, you know, the different backgrounds that everybody has. So uh, let's start from the Aztec team, whoever is here right now. Um, tell us about, you know, about yourself, who you are, what you're doing, uh, how, you, how you got to know Totem. Uh, All yeah. right, so I will start. Yeah. Um, so my name is Roy. Uh, I live in Cyprus, I'm Israeli. I know uh, Idan for, uh, for a while now, and Oren also. So uh, here in Totem almost since day one. Um, I do web design, marketing, um, just found out about Totem like six months ago and I'm so excited and then to be here and then do stuff and then see where this is going. Uh, yeah, and it was my first game jam, as Idan said, uh, very excited, uh, looking forward for the next game jam. And it was great working with uh, Urimas, which I know met a few times. Uh, and plumbing, which I, I don't know, so we just met. And yeah, I'm happy that we, we had the game, it was working. Uh, we kind of messed up with the legacy. But uh, yeah, there's another jam and we, are, we will be there, for sure. experience. Uh, Plamen did some uh, modeling in university. I don't know. Fix me if I'm wrong, Plamen. No, it was before that, uh, way before that. So the university it was utilizing my knowledge already. Uh, so continue with your story. I'll continue with mine. After. Great. Uh, great. So basically, we created a team of people who actually don't know what they are doing. <laughs> so we did a lot of uh, YouTube, a lot of tutorials, but, uh, but uh, the, the, the beautiful part about this, it just shows you that if you have a persistence and willingness to learn, you can actually do pretty cool things even in just in a week. So I'm very proud of my teammates and uh, yeah. <laughs> go for a coffee, guys, you deserve it. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, I'm Plamen, and uh, I know Orimas for the past four years. We were working together in a company here in Cyprus, but uh, he left the company, I left the company, but uh, yeah, we, we keep in touch. So, uh, my background, I'm, uh, I was like a, a Swiss Army knife guy, knowing everything, <laughs> can't do everything. Before that, um, uh, I was like as a hobby while being a student at the university. I was participating in an open source project for a remake of a game called Little Big Adventure. So I was uh, doing the assets, 3D models, um, textures, you name it, animations and everything. So uh, after I started uh, working, uh, I kind of abandoned this hobby and uh, this is the first time in maybe over 10 years I started working on a game and it was never ever that fast. Like this is the fastest thing that I, I worked on. Uh, like uh, 
as I said before, but uh, not everybody was uh, participating in the call. I recycled some of the models that we started making beforehand, before even knowing what the subject of uh, the theme was going to be. But then Roy decided to utilize his creativity in uh, Blender and made some uh, nice models that are unfortunately are not suitable for games. So I uh, used his concept and made Sorry. basically new models. Yeah. So he's uh, like a both uh, inspiration and a concept artist. So I quickly made the models, uh, rigged them, animated, and uh, yeah, made textures based on his original ideas. Very that cool. Was all right. Uh, and also started, yeah. started uh, using Unity for the first time, basically. While Orimas was fighting with the rest of the game, I managed to find a way how to implement the models with the animations. And uh, basically, we bundled everything in the last hours of the job. In the last hour? And, and I know, it, like, a, even a bit more than that, so into the voting period. Uh, so congratulations, you guys. Uh, hopefully you, you learned a lot and found this uh, experience uh, like uh, educational. Uh, we'll move on to Eduardo. So uh, uh, this is a place to say that some of the participants here are actually also grant applicants. Totem has a um, grant program. We uh, uh, basically grant teams, studios who want to build with us um, uh, money to be able to create a basic prototype, a basic uh, demo game, if you will, vertical slice in, in six weeks or so. Uh, and Eduardo is actually a part of a team that today, uh, it was uh, the first day of them uh, working of, uh, on uh, a new totem game that's called Dreadstone Keep. Uh, so Eduardo, uh, why don't you present yourself uh, and how you heard about us, uh, how you ended up being here. All right, so hello everyone, my name is Eduardo. I'm one of the co-founders from Pavertail Studio. Uh, we are a studio located in Brasilia, Brazil. And well, we met Totem through some of our partners, Indie Hero, who pointed us to their grant. So we are on this now, we are doing Dreadstone Keep. So I decided to do the, to partake on the Legacy Gem just to I love game jams, by the way. I I have participated in quite a few, and it's always, always an experience I'm very fond of. So I was like, well, it's something I like to do. It will be an opportunity to better understand the other systems, how the Todd and plugin works. So I went uh, who won it. Uh, since I was like doing other deadlines, I had to do it on a little smaller time, so just two days and few more on the free time, although um, I, I think that would be it. Sorry, I don't anything more. Eduardo, <laughs> uh, uh, you, you do you, you say you do participate in many game jams, so how you compare this one? Like how did you enjoy this one particularly or has it similar or different to other ones? I'm just curious. Okay, so the game jam I have most participated was Ludum Dare. Uh, I have also participated in some game jams like the Game Maker's Toolkit Game Jam. I have participated in also some local game jams. Uh, what I found interesting about this game jam specifically is that it wasn't something that we were, we were working only inside of our team. So we were talking for other teams to better understand their games and to integrate these games in some sort of way. That, and I must admit that was a new experience for me in game jams. And I really found that very interesting. Very cool. Thank you, Eduardo. Uh, thank you so much. And, and really an amazing game that you've made here in uh, only all of what you, you know, what you say are two days. This is pretty impressive. Um, very cool. So you took it into like a 48 hour experience. Very neat. Uh, all right. Um, so uh, we have the, anyone from the night? Yeah, I see all of you still here and also Aviad. So uh, why don't you introduce yourselves? Um, hello, my name is Ofek, as you know, and uh, Abiyad, uh, we are both uh, students of uh, Bezalel uh, uh, Visual De Design Academy. Uh, we were actually, we knew about Totem because uh, Idan used to be our uh, kind of teacher. He teached us what we know about uh, 
uh, game design and also uh, he teach me pixel art and uh, so we saw that he's made doing a game jam and uh, we thought hey that could be fun so uh, yeah basically that's that's all that I have to say yeah even the programming that we learned that actually from it done uh, so it was actually a pretty uh, cool way to uh, do everything here yeah, actually picture yeah that's pretty cool and you use uh visual programming the new visual programming feature that uh, that's now available on unity it used to be like an outside uh sort of a resource sort of plug in and now they like they do they bought it and forgot about it or something but uh you guys actually worked like most of the logic of the game using visual uh, visual programming, which is uh, something that I think uh, can enable lots of, uh, you know, designers like yourselves who are not mainly programmers to create like different experiences, uh, which I find quite cool. Um, thank you guys for introducing yourselves. The other part of the team, uh, also I think uh, from the visual communication department yes. in the SLL. And there so, were also uh, artists. Um, like, uh, yeah, and uh, the visual scripting on Unity actually really did help us make the game uh, that we wanted to make without any compromise. Uh, well, unless you think of the compromise that we didn't know enough uh, to make it even better. So, uh, yeah, uh, something about that, because I think our goal is to make it for of us and, of course, the community creating the, the, the plugins, as simple as possible for 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 the game dev developers. So you have even a more unique um, position as someone who, who, who are not coming from the development side but from the art side. Did you find that using the plugin with the visual um, uh, uh, development tools, it did work together? How easy was it? Do you think there's other things that we can make it simpler for for this uh, from your perspective? Well, actually, it was kind of amazing once we got it uh, working uh, using you guys' help, so because of uh, C Sharp. Uh, once it was implemented, like you could go to the login and do and get all of the variables, it was like insanely easy to set up the events and make them work on our code, on visual coding. And uh, maybe if uh, there's, there will be any way for you to make the plugin also uh, like integrate with uh, what we did with it done, we generated units that will work on Visual Script. Maybe there's a way to make it like uh, with more options inside the units that could be cool. I don't know yet though. Uh, but uh, yes, insanely easy to work with on Visual Scripting once we got it working. Cool. Yeah, that's a very important uh, input, and uh, I'm sure uh, Faithan is hearing this, Sidan is hearing this, and maybe we'll take it to the drawing board and see if we can even make the integration part even easier in that regard. Yeah, th this is actually something, it came up a few times, as I mentioned already, in the game jam, that there can be some things we, we, we should probably do uh, for the next game jam, at least, to tie the different uh, methods that we're using together to create all of those legacy events. Um, it can be a bit simpler. I think the example that we have is quite good, but it's ge uh, generally not ex exactly the use case for most of the games, you know, having the UI and everything tied to it. So uh, we, we should have a discussion around that, but any feedback you guys have regarding uh, using this, uh, this plugin uh, um, and integrating it into your games, if you have any, you know, questions, any suggestions, any feedback about the process at all, any thoughts, Feel free to share them with us. Uh, we we value all, all sort of feedback like that. Um, so uh, yeah, yeah, I just I, I invited the T Rex to to join to join us. He's on another call with some developers uh, to introduce like what's the the things that are going to be released this week. Uh, so maybe after the introduction, if you want to join us, maybe I'll say a few words about that. Very cool. All right. So um, we actually don't have. Uh, a lot here we just uh, had to leave for the treatment uh, so I can say that uh, Alon is like a programmer artist uh, he's a part of the making GLM community and uh, like I know him personally from there from the local community here in Jerusalem uh, and maybe uh, his friend from the Romanian myth can introduce him a little bit maybe Mercury who's here and Alon is also a part of a team who wanted to to grant it got accepted 
their game is uh, Dungeon Sim. It's also one of the the grant applicants that we have here. Um, so uh, uh, just another uh, another name drop of another totem project that's under development. Uh, so uh, yeah, the Romanian team. Uh, South Gali, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Attack you first. <laughs> um, hey, my name is Saf. Um, I'm also from the Make Games uh, JLM community. So like I know Alon and I know Idan from there and Galit. Um, me, Galit and Itamar uh, started working together um, and called ourselves uh, Marine Life Studio. And um, joined us uh, another member that called Shalev and after then a musician that called Tamir. And now we bring uh, one more member that called Noah, uh, that her name is Noah and uh, she's an uh, technical artist and um, we're working now the jam was like really fun to to take a break from the the game that we we working on in the most of the time that called dance we are doing it uh, with totem we did like a uh, one uh, uh, how to call it like one uh, prototype we understand the game uh, need to be changed and now we're working on the uh, second uh, and better game that uh, we are still like uh, understanding the game design and uh, and how to do it, uh, so it will be fun and we'll um, use the element of uh, the totem and the plugins uh, in a good way. So this jam was great because we like get to play with the uh, legacy and get to know uh, other people in the community and we really like uh, uh, enjoy. Um, working together, but we also want to, to make this uh, connection with other uh, uh, creators and, we, and to see other games. I really enjoyed to, to see all the games and I really want to, to play them. I didn't have the opportunity yet. Um, and yeah, we, we will be really happy to like uh, keep and, uh, and like work together and do more uh, like uh, coll collaborative uh, things and games and uh, and I hope to, to see you in uh, in more events like this and uh, and to be uh, a community that like really um, connected and talk together and making stuff together. Galit, you want to say uh, something? Anyway, um, what do I have to do to present myself? Uh, yeah. Okay, my name is Khalid. I am originally from Panama. Hey, Eduardo. Um, I came to Israel. I studied the Khalil animation in order to get enough skills to wander, a lot, uh, to wander around life and drawing emo boxes. And so how that end, that lead me, I mean, guide me into making Jerusalem. And that's how I met Asaf, Itamal, and Pola Hebre, uh, I mean, all the other friends. And then I had this idea of a personal game that I started animation. I don't know anything about programming, any, you know, anything about Unity. I play games, but that doesn't mean I know how to, you know, do game design and, you know, uh, everything else. So uh, Asaf and Itamar heard the, the idea and they were like, okay, we're trying to learn how to do games too, let's do it together. And we were like, okay, cool. And then suddenly Idan came into the picture. Like we already met him before, but he came with the, into the picture with this amazing idea of Totten. And we are like, yep, yeah, we are joining you. So that is how basically we are here all together as a family and struggling doing games, but enjoying every second of it. Thanks, Gilead. You're welcome. Uh, I love you. Yeah, we're, we're trying to build something that's like uh, sort of a, you know, a healthy community here with uh, with a bunch of people just coming together to make cool stuff and also be able to, you know, to earn money and, 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 and go through life doing the things we love. So hopefully this you find this all uh, inspiring and uh, you want to like keep creating with us, you know, tell your friends, uh, let's, uh, bring them in, you know, just, just spread the love and share it with everyone. Um, all right, so uh, I'm sorry, I skipped the Celtic team. I'm not sure why. Uh, maybe a lot of being here threw me off or something like this. Uh, so uh, guys, why don't you, guys and gals, why don't you uh, present yourselves? We have Rotten here and we have Dave. Uh, and we have Yuval as well. So uh, who are you? What are you doing here? 
my name is Rotem. Me, Yuval, and also Shachar finished right now Bezalel. We studied animation. And uh, we really wanted to experience in the gaming industry, trying to figure out how is the pipeline of uh, gaming works. So someone just sent us, there's going to be a game jam. And we said, yeah, why not? Let's try. Uh, and that's it. We had a very fun experience, I think, on my side at least. Yes, I, I can uh, say as well. Uh, hi, I'm Yuval. <laughs> uh, it was a great experience. Um, we, I think we learned a lot and uh, we now know things that we want to take um, to uh, future projects with us. Uh, and it's really cool to see um, a lot of other people um, that makes game for fun and enjoy. Uh, this aspect and uh, all this creativity, it was really, really cool. Dave, are you here? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm on the phone. Can you hear me well? Yeah. Okay, nice. So I'm Dave. Uh, I met Idan on the Game Developer League, which is kind of an international um, community of game developers. I've been kind of meddling with game development for like over 10 years, just as a hobby. And lately I've been taking it a bit more seriously. And for, as, a, as for Totem, I really love the sense of community. I just want to say we, we have like 20 something people here, which is really awesome. That's even more than last time. So it's definitely nice to see this community growing. For me, this is a great experience to kind of like just work in a team because I'm used to doing everything on my own. I had a great time uh, on this jam, and it was really nice seeing like all the artwork from the Betzalel uh, graduates, from uh, Yuval Otem and uh, Shacha. And unfortunately, John isn't here, but his music and his sounds were also really awesome in the game. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the next one. All right, so um, I guess uh, I guess this is all. Of us. So I want to thank you, everybody including the guests who came together at this time of the day. For some of us, it may be a bit, a bit like later. Uh, thank you all for joining us for this uh, wonderful experience. This is the second time we're doing this. We hope to continue doing those game jams uh, on a regular basis, something like a monthly thing. Um, I want to encourage all of you to go and to play each other's games. Uh, vote on them. We have like a voting period. It's more of like, it's not super serious, you know, so it's just like a friendly, kind of a way to give feedback to each other, get a sense of where you're at. Um, and uh, so take the time, play the games, see the different legacy events. If you want you know, to update anything, to change, to fix your games, this is all, you know, all, all of this is, is super welcome. Um, hopefully we're all kind of witnessing it, uh, like history here with uh, we're making all those uh, interconnected games created by, the, by a bunch of people from all over the world just doing this, you know, for, for fun, kind of. Uh, and hopefully this will be uh, used to build a basis for what will eventually become a very large, you know, project and community uh, that people can, can use in their daily professional lives to, you know, to earn money and, and go about the life, do the things they love. Um, yeah, exactly. I want to also thank you for uh, arranging all of this and uh, the other people around the uh, behind the scenes that helped, like uh, Michal for the art and Dasha for helping in the organization, and everybody, of course, everybody who participate and all the guests and all that. I'll just mention, I don't want to take more time, but I think this week there will be a significant release from the development side about uh, better explorers and some other tools that we uh, want to implement. And of course, the legacy system itself will be uh, improved if we will not use just integers that we'll have to use. Um, guess what they are, we'll, we'll create something which is much more uh, robust and easily to co easier to communicate between, uh, between stuff. There's a lot of stuff coming, uh, coming up. Uh, and I want to join in, in, Dan, in thanking everybody and remind you that uh, we're a startup that takes uh, on itself to do something really significant, which is not just to give money around, but to create a platform with a lot of games that a lot of players will want to come and buy assets that they can use 
and playing all these games and, and get the monetization from that direction. So for that, we need a lot of games. We don't do standard startup marketing where we invite everybody. We, right now, we, we're speaking with a core of, of friends and friends of friends. So as Dan said, if you know people in the field, bring them over. It's always better to bring people you know and trust you and, and can join the community. We'll have time to grow much faster later on, but this is very critical to bring your friends, bring people you trust and believe. If you believe the project and want to expand it, that would be great. And um, yeah, that's it for me. Perfect. All right, guys. So uh, I think this was a pretty wonderful event altogether. Um, and uh, I want to thank you again, everybody. And I had like a slide to say thank you. Uh, I encourage you to go to find like our, our Twitter and stuff. But I, I really encourage you, if, if you like what you what you saw here, uh, share it with your friends, share it uh, on social media, um, take the time to play the different games, maybe even games from other members of the community. We have a few games going on uh, on grants right now, which are aimed to be a bit bigger. Um, so you can see them um, like on the, on the channels on the left under Totem Games, you can see the Dino project that's currently going on, Threadstone Keep that just started, Dungeon Scene, Fraseria, Island Ambush, Monkers, Roblets, and we have a bunch of you. Those are just the games that are currently ongoing with grants. Um, and we're actually going to probably do some uh, alterations in the Discord server itself. So it's going to be a bit easier to find all of those in a dedicated channel very soon. But for now, take care, uh, game on, and uh, yeah, see you around here on Discord. Bye, guys.